Hello, I'm Brian Zen. I teach investment analysis at St. John's University. I also manage money for some private and institutional clients at a New York investment firm. I've earned my MBA in accounting, a PhD in finance, and I have passed all the three CFA exams. In this study session, we talk about equity valuation. First, we need to understand the top-down approach to equity valuation. The top-down approach starts from looking at the macro big picture, starts from looking at the country. The first step is country selection. The second step is industry selection. And the third step is the company selection or the investment selection. So you first look at the macro picture, see which country have the best economic growth in the next few years. And then you try to figure out in that country, what are the best industry that's going to benefit from the macroeconomic picture in that country. Then within the best industries, you try to find the best companies. We also need to understand the varieties of forms of returns to equity investors. If you buy a stock, your returns will be flowing in in two forms. First, you will be receiving dividends from the stock that you have bought. Of course, if the stock doesn't pay a dividend, you're going to get Zippo. Then, hopefully, the price of the stock will appreciate. That would be the capital gain that you will be getting. If you bought a bond, you also have two forms of returns to you as an investor. First, you will get the coupon interests. Then the bond prices go up and down also as the interest rate changes. So you also have a capital gain component of your return. Now we try to do some valuation calculation to figure out the right price for certain investments. The basic principle for all the stock investing for bond investing and preferred stock investing is essentially the same. You're trying to discount future cash flows that you're going to receive using an appropriate discount rate to get the present value of all those future cash flows that you're going to receive and the sum of those present values should be equal to the price that you pay. That's the basic principle of valuation. Let's take a look at the simplest version of one of those kind of valuations. Let's say we bought a preferred stock, and that stock has a perpetual constant dividend that lasts to the ending of the world. Let's take a look at the simple calculation involved here in terms of valuing that preferred stock. Here we have a dividend that we're going to receive one year from today. And this dividend from the preferred stock is perpetual. How do we calculate the value of such a preferred stock paying such a perpetual dividend? The formula is here. You use the amount of the annual dividend divided by the required return that you need from this preferred stock investment you will be able to calculate the appropriate price to pay for this preferred stock. The easier way to remember this formula is whatever price you pay, multiply by the required return that you need from this preferred stock should be equal to the perpetual dividend that you are going to receive from this preferred stock. Now let's take a look at how to do the value calculation for a common stock. Compared to a perpetual dividend preferred stock, we have two more complications here. First, the dividend from a stock will be changing. Secondly, we will have an ending terminal sales price for the stock after, let's say, 20 years we have been holding the stock. How do we deal with those two complications? Here, we have the dividend for the future number of years. 
and we're going to let this dividend change and divide each dividend by the appropriate discount rate raised to the power of whatever number of years after which we're going to receive this particular dividend. And of course, we will have to factor in the terminal sales price. This sales price can be estimated, or you can use the Gordon constant growth model to figure out a point in the company's growth that after that point, the company's dividend will be growing at a constant rate perpetually. Then you use the Gordon model to calculate the terminal value at year n, after which the company will have a constant growth. Of course, before that constant growth phase, you will have to calculate each and every dividend before that stage, and then use the appropriate discount rate to discount all those dividends and the terminal value to get the present value. Of course, you add up all those present values of the dividends and the terminal value. The appropriate discount rate that you should be using here is the cost of equity. And down below, we see the formula for the Gordon constant growth model. Here again, RE stands for the cost of equity, the required return of equity investments. The required return minus the constant growth rate. The growth rate is the growth rate of the dividend. Of course, we hope that this dividend will reflect the proper earnings power and cash flow generating power of your enterprise. Required return minus the growth rate is at the denominator. At the numerator is the dividend that you are going to receive one year from today or one year from the point when your company will be growing constantly. So dividend one divided by the required return minus the constant growth rate is the Gordon model to calculate the price of a common stock. If you need to figure out how to derive this formula, you will need calculus, which is beyond the curriculum of the CFA exam. Now let's try to figure out how do we calculate the value of the common stock of a company that's experiencing super normal growth at the early stage. There are a couple of steps involved in the calculation of those type of common stocks. The first and the most important step is to draw a timeline. Actually drawing a timeline help you to think a lot better. What we're trying to do is to calculate the correct present value of this particular investment. And let's say 10 years from now, let's say the exam question tells you that 10 years from now, the company is going to enter the phase of constant growth. So what we need to do, first step, you have to calculate all the dividend that you are expected to receive during the supernormal growth phase. They will give you the supernormal growth rate, and probably they will give you the dividend you're going to receive one year from today. So you use D1 multiply by the supernormal growth rate you are going to get the dividend that you will be receiving two years from today. That's the D1 multiplied by 1 plus growth rate of the supernormal stage, supernormal growth stage. Then likewise, you continue this compounded multiplication to get all the dividend that you will be receiving before the 10th year.